Hey, good morning. Good to be with you today. I hope you are doing well. I hope this video finds you doing well and, and blessed today. And I've uh, been praying for you. Uh, there's a lot of you that I know that are not able to be here with us at church. And, um, and, and really praying for you that this video will help you feel connected and, 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 and hear the prayers of the people who care about you. And uh, so uh, thank you for joining in. Thank you for listening to this today. And I want to continue our study today from Acts. Uh, we've been doing the series in Acts, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. It's been a lot of fun for me to study. But Acts today is Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And the, uh, the message today is entitled Contrasting Devotions. Uh, very interesting story that happens here. And if you're familiar with our study up to this point, you know that uh, as we studied Acts, you found out you know a lot of good things have happened here. A lot of exciting things have happened to the church. And the Holy Spirit has been sent by God down here. The Holy Spirit has came and it has just changed the way people see God and see everything. The church is growing. The church is excited. There's the gospel is being spread. People are being told about Jesus and his resurrection and his salvation and all of those things. Those things are happening and they've been happening in the, in the church. And the church up to this point in chapter five has grown rapidly and the excitement People are doing things. People are helping each other. People are reaching out to each other. They're selling their stuff so they can help other people. It's just amazing. And that really is what leads us to this place here. We just heard in Acts chapter 4 of the benevolence or the love of the compassion of a man named Barnabas, the son of encouragement, it says here, is, uh, is his nickname, Barnabas. And we told by that he he was one of those that would that sold property, uh, brought the money to the apostles so they could distribute it out to those that needed it. A lot of folks probably were in need of of just food and, and clothing and different things. The church was just growing that rapidly, and now we come into Acts chapter five and we have a completely opposite kind of a, a thing happening here than we did with Barnabas. And so I want to read that text to you, and we're going to get into this today, and, and hopefully it'll help us uh, to understand um, that sin still finds its way in even some of the good things in, in God's work. And so it's the human factor, it's the flesh factor that uh, tends to work its way in. But let's look at this text together in Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It says, but a certain man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself and with his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it, the money, he laid it at the apostles' feet. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? After it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. As he heard these things, Ananias fell down, breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard it. And the young man arose and, and covered him up, and carried him, uh, carried, carrying him out, they buried him. Now there elapsed an interval of about three hours, and his wife, Ananias' wife, came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter responded to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for such and such price, the price that Ananias had said. And she said, Yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, Why is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they shall carry you out as well. And, the, they, and she fell immediately at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead, and they, bur they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Let's pray. Lord God, I just want to thank you for this day. 
Thank you for this word. Thank you for this message, God. Thank you for all that you've blessed us with, God. And we thank you today, God, that this, uh, this is from you, God. We, we get to hear this truth. And Lord, even in, in the great work that the Holy Spirit was doing, we see that sin, Satan, was trying to work his way in and ruin things and, and, really, and really divert the attention, God, of those that were working for, uh, in your gospel and for you and spreading the word. God, I pray today that we would be aware of this and realize and know that Satan's always lurking. Wherever you're working and doing good, Lord, the, Satan is trying his best to disrupt that. And so, uh, God, help us to see that. Help us to understand that. Lord, we do love you and thank you. I pray for all of those that are listening to this video, Lord, some that could not be here with us in the physical sense. Uh, I'm thinking of James and Gloria Perry. I'm thinking of Sonny and Rick Duhon, God, and uh, others that have been sick, have not been able to be here. I lift them up to you right now. Um, and God, just uh, maybe there's some that are listening to this, maybe have heard this message for the first time. God, would you just touch their hearts and help them? also. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for being here. You know, there is a, a movement in our world today, uh, quite frankly, that try to change history, to try to change the narrative of the history. Now, you can't change history. History happened. It's already been done. But there are many that are trying to erase that evidence of those things that have taken place. And regardless of whether you agree with that or not, in some cases, um, it is a sad thing, I think, for us because it is because of our history, it is because of the things, both negative and positive, that we are the people we are. And hopefully, in negative history, when things happen that are detrimental to the human race, we learn from those things. We need to remember the mistakes that were made. But when there are positive things that are done, we also should remember those and remember how we got to where we are. Um, and so history is a very important part. And I say that to say that biblically, when we look at the New Testament and we look at Acts today, you know, a lot of this, this is past. These are things that happened before you and I ever came on the scene. And there are things that in here that, you know, we get to see that the Bible is just almost this. <laughs> it just demonstrates just this stubborn honesty. We get to see people, you know, if you want people to join your cause and you want people to join with the church and, and different things like that, we as Christians want people to be saved and become a part of the body of Christ, the church of Christ. But if we look at this episode here in Acts chapter 5, you know, this is a negative. This is a black eye in a way on the church. And so if the human writers, if it would have just been human writers that were trying to promote the church and, and promote the cause of Christ, the gospel of Christ, very likely if it was just left up to them, they would have took this part, this story out because it, it leaves this negative impression on the church as a whole. There was, there was this sinful activity that came into the church, but God says no. I want people to know, and you know, one of the encouraging things for me is to see the people, flawed and all, warts and all, that God used throughout the Word of God in bringing uh, His truth to the forefront and helping us to understand His love for us. He used people that were broken and flawed and, and had their negative aspects, but yet He used them anyway in great and powerful ways. And so we get to see that in the Bible. And this story really helps us to see that today. You know, there's a lot of encouragement for us today that shows, you know, that the church, even at its best time, this was a good time for the church, had its negative problems. It had a mixture of good and bad. The church is made up of human beings. Now, Christ is the head but it's made up of human beings. And so there are going to be some flaws and some negatives involved in that. So Luke had just talked about um, Barnabas in chapter 4 about how this son of encouragement, and he was one example of how the church was reaching out and helping. They were selling stuff. They didn't really see anything being their own. They wanted to sell and help others, and so they were doing that. But I'm going to tell you, wherever you find great generosity, most of the time in a church, look out 
The devil is lurking and he's trying to disrupt. So uh, beware of that. The church experienced great power during this time and it, it had great favor at this time. But now, at this point, it's going to experience great fear. This is a first for the early church. And so this story of greed and selfishness of Ananias and Sapphira are contrasted with the selflessness of Barnabas. So let's look at this together. You know, the name of, that Jesus gave to this kind of practice that we're seeing in Ananias uh, and Sapphira, he gives that a name, and it's hypocrisy, hypocrite, which really simply means wearing a mask or playing an actor. It was the word used to describe actors. Hypocrisy is a deliberate deception. It's trying to make people think you are more spiritual than you really, really are. Um, and so that was the sin of Ananias and Sapphire. They were putting on this beautiful front in order to conceal their sin in their lives, uh, sin that ultimately cost them their lives. You know, the word Ananias, the name Ananias means God is gracious, but he also quickly learned God is holy. And then Sapphire means beautiful. It's a beautiful name, but her heart was ugly with sin. So what was the source of the deception? Why would they do this? And so we see, you know, in verse 3, it says here that Peter says to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? The sin of this couple was energized by Satan. And let me tell you this. It's, it's true today as it was for them then. But if Satan cannot destroy a church from the outside, uh, he will work hard from the inside with people and try to destroy it from the inside out. Beware of that. We see a lot of that in churches today. And, you know, so what was the reason? What was the substance of the deception? What was the deception that Satan placed in his heart? And, and what was it all about? Well, we're told in verse 3, a little further down, it says, you know, you were filled, uh, your heart, Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land. Now, what's interesting about this, the sin of the couple really here was that they held back some of the price of the land, but it was because they were being deceptive. It, the sin really wasn't failing to give all the money. That they weren't being forced to do that, but rather it was pretending to give all the money. They were lying about it. It didn't matter. God, you know, God was laying it on people's hearts to do and to give and all of these things. Um, you know, if they wanted to give partial, that's fine. But why would you lie thinking you could lie to God and the Holy Spirit about that? The basic issue here was not lying to the church only, but to God. They were trying to lie to God. Uh, it's a foolish endeavor, but that's what they were trying to do. In fact, in, in uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 2, it says they kept back some of the price for themselves. And the word here, kept back, is the idea of embezzle or to pilfer, to thief, to steal some of the money for themselves. Um, you know, the couple wanted the acclaim. They wanted to be noticed. They wanted to sound like good, you know, good folks and, and friendly and compassionate folks and helpful folks. But they didn't, they didn't, want, the, they didn't want the sacrifice that was involved with that. Um, they wanted to the comfort without the commitment. And so what appeared to be a public generosity was actually, you know, a family conspiracy. And God was looking. You can't hide anything from God. You know, there's an old saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, you can fool all of the people all of the time, but you can't fool God any of the time. Undoubtedly, the same Spirit of God that Ananias and Sapphira had lied to the Apostle Peter, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, lied to about the money to Peter, Peter also used the Holy Spirit to give him discernment to know that they were lying. And so, understand this. Ananias was really under no obligation to give. He didn't have to give anything. He could have gave some of it. Uh, that would have been fine. He could have gave none of it. He could have gave all of it. There was no 
you know, no pressure on him by anybody to do anything. But um, he was free to do that or, you know, whatever. But the Lord, let me tell you something. The Lord covets no man's money. You have to realize that God owns it all. You know, I love this banner we have back here. And, you know, this banner shows some, uh, some beautiful grassy hills and some mountains in the background with sheep all over them. And it just helps to remind me that, you know, God owns everything. He owns it all. He owns the land. He owns the skies. He owns the clouds. He owns the sheep. He owns everything. He owns us. He created us. And, uh, you know, the Lord really covets no man's money. He doesn't need it. What is not freely given out of the spirit of generosity and integrity, you know, he, he just rather you keep it. You know, we, we're supposed to give from the heart. Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? Peter asked him. And you know, even though Ananias was strongly tempted by Satan, he still was responsible for the decisions he made. And you'll not find in the Bible anywhere where the Bible uh, lays the blame on somebody else's sin to Satan. Well, it's Satan's fault. You know, we have this one, this, this, this crazy world that we live in today. Everybody's wanting to blame uh, their problems, their sin, their reactions on somebody else. That's straight from the Garden of Eden. That was Adam and Eve's lie. Well, it's not my fault. It's the woman you gave me, Lord. And by the way, you created her and you gave her to me. So really, ultimately, it's your fault, Lord. And that's the kind of mentality we have today. It's the same old lie Satan uses all over the place today. We have people burning down buildings and breaking windows and beating people up, claiming it's somebody else's fault for making me angry and want to do that. Well, that is sin. We'll call it plain and simple what it is. It's a lie and it's sin. It's deception. And you have not lied to man, but to God, he says here. He lied to the Holy Spirit. This affirms the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person. And it is also clear that he is a divine. He's, he is part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is. Well, Peter discerned Ananias' sin. He saw it for what it was, but God judged it. And so, you know, um, an, uh, there was a poet one time, Oliver Wendell Holmes, that said this. He said that... Um, he wrote this poem, but he said, Sin has many tools, but a lie is the handle which fits them all. Sin has many tools, but a lie is the handle which fits them all. Satan is the father of lies. We see that in John chapter 8. Satan was the father of lies. That's his character. That's who he is. And so he lies. Satan lied to and through Ananias and Sapphire, and it cost them their lives. It's a sobering truth. Sometimes God will take the lives even of believers. You know, God's creator. He's the giver of life, and he can take it back if that's what he chooses to do. Death is God's ultimate form of physical discipline. Sometimes we see that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9. Sometimes that's what happens. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. You know, great fear came when everyone heard what had happened to Ananias and Sapphira, it came into the church. And I'm going to tell you where sin is, fear comes. Uh, sin and fear go right together. But also I know that fear can cause people to be aware and be a lot more careful. Um, and this incident with Ananias and Sapphira brought fear. But it also showed the people that God is holy and God knows everything. The Holy Spirit knows what people are saying and doing, knows their hearts, if they're lying, if they're telling the truth. And there were, uh, there were reactions from this from God towards Ananias and Sapphira. And they lost their lives in this. There should have been some essence of fear here to help people realize. Fear can be a motivator and it can be a protector in our lives. It can be a safety switch to keep us from, from getting into further harm. Well, what do we do with this knowledge? What do we do with this today? How can I apply this story to my life and learn from it? Well, I want to give you a couple of verses out of the Psalms. 
that really is a good prayer and a good hope and a good direction for any of us as we try to do things God the way God would have us to do. And this is just the way I choose to respond. I want to first give you Psalms 19:14. It said, "Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer." Psalm 139 verses 23 through 24 says it this way. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. You know, these are anxious times we're living in. They're rough times we're living in today. Chaotic times, to, to say it bluntly but they are not an excuse for not living in the truth of the word. There's no excuse for us to, to, to act like animals based on what we see around us. We are still followers of God's word and we have to do that. You are responsible, I am responsible to God for your, you are responsible for your decision, I'm responsible for my decisions to God and your choices. Choose for yourselves today who you will follow. You know, choose Christ and set your eyes upon him. I, I, I hope and pray that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You understand that sin came into this world uh, through the Garden of Eden, through the decision of, of one man and one woman in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. And it came in, and we are a fallen, sinful people because of that. And we make some terrible choices. We make some choices that are based on what I want to do, not what God wants us to do. And I want to say to you today that Christ came and died on the cross to pay for those sins, to redeem us from those sinful ways and sinful things. He paid for them with his blood and his life on the cross. He, he, went to a, he died there on that cross, and he went to a tomb. He was there for three days, but he arose again on the third day. He defeated, he defeated sin, and he defeated death. And because of that, if we will place our trust and our hope in him and trust him and him alone, we too can have forgiveness of our sins because he paid for them. And we also can be uh, victory, victorious over death. We can live for all eternity. Uh, physical death here on this earth, it'll come to all of us, but we can live eternally with Jesus Christ in heaven. Have you made that choice today? I hope you have, and I pray that you have. I'm going to pray with us, and we're going to be finished here today, but thank you so much for listening, but let's pray. Lord God, thank you again for who you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you, God, for your hand upon our lives. Thank you, God, for the things you've done for us. And thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for him dying for our sins and forgiving us if we will but trust him with our lives. God, I love you today. I thank you for loving me. I thank you, God, for this time in your word. Thank you for this story with Ananias and Sapphire, God. And we just, give you, we just give you all praise, Lord. And we just thank you again for all that you've done for us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. I hope the message has been a, uh, been a blessing for you. Hope to see you again real soon.